Hi, this is Kian. Once again, welcome to Prayer Line. Precious one, I want you to know that today is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. It's a miracle, just plain miracle, that Pastor Yusuf of um, Iran is still alive, in spite of the fact that they have sentenced him to be executed and hung, but he's still alive. And I believe it is because of God's divine intervention but precious one we don't have to just um, ignore the story you have to pray as a child of God for Christians who are going through persecution the Bible makes us to understand that in the book of Acts that Herod arrested James and beheaded James James was beheaded and then it pleased the Jewish so they put Herod proceeded further to arrest Peter and he was about to kill Peter also but the Bible says that constant prayers were being raised up was being prayed for Peter and because of that the Bible says an angel of the Lord intervened and in the prison cell went and delivered Peter it was prayer which allowed God's divine intervention to take place. Remember the first time James was beheaded. But when Peter was arrested and was about to be killed, the Christians woke up and fervent prayer was constantly you know, done for him. And an angel of the Lord was released to go and deliver him. I believe your prayer can save Pastor Yusuf. I believe my prayer can save Pastor Yusuf. I believe your prayer can also deliver a Christian who is going through persecution, probably in Iran or in Nigeria, the northern part of Nigeria, <coughs> sorry, or any part of the world where they are going through persecution. The power of your prayer and my prayer can deliver them. So all I'm asking from you today is that spend five minutes as you watch this clip and pray for Pastor Yusuf. And use him as a point of con a point of contact to pray for all um, Christians who are going through persecution, those who are being harassed, those who are whose family are being attacked by it could be Muslims or any other the government, you no know, whatever attack Christians are going through all over the world that the Lord Himself should show them divine mercy and protect them and deliver them from their enemies so i want you to just spend some five minutes today as you watch this clip and just pray for pastor yusuf so join me as we pray for him and use him as a point of contact to also pray for fellow believers who are going through persecution that the hand of the lord <coughs> sorry the hand of the lord will you know intervene and deliver them from their oppressors or from their enemies or anyone who is persecuting them let's pray father we thank you and we thank you for giving us the privilege to also intercede on behalf of pastor yusuf lord we thank you for even the audacity of faith and the hope in christ jesus that you've given to him the hope for him to even stand for Jesus Christ in spite of death Lord we thank you that you have given him the boldness to take a stand for your son Jesus father we thank you for granting him this divine grace and strength but Lord today we are just praying for him even in the name of Jesus Christ that you protect his family protect his two kids protect his wife protect his extended family and lord we are also praying that you protect him and show him mercy show him mercy in the sight of the iranians show him mercy as <clears throat> you have showed him mercy until now father he could have been killed a long time ago for about two years now you have kept him to this point but father we are praying that lord god almighty you deliver him from this situation even in the name of jesus lord we pray for deliverance lord we pray for deliverance touch the heart of the iranian government and lord let them release him even in jesus name 
let him be set free in Jesus' name. Let him be acquitted in Jesus' name, even in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that those people you have touched their heart to be an advocate and send his information and news around the world. Father, I pray that you continue to touch their heart and Father, give them the grace to rally after this man and Lord, use them, O Lord Almighty, to let the world know what is going on so that Father, deliverance will not just be for Pastor Yusuf, but for all Christians who are undergoing persecution in Iran, in Malaysia, in northern part of Nigeria, in India, wherever the Christians are finding themselves in persecution, Lord, I pray for deliverance, even in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you protect them. Lord, I pray that you protect them. You are our great protector. You are our great protector. Lord, protect them just as you protected Peter when he was in the prison cell just about to be killed by Herod. And Lord, the Bible says that, Father, you sent forth an angel and the angel went into the prison cell and delivered Peter. Lord, I pray that you even send human beings, O oh Lord Almighty, O oh Lord, to go in and Lord Almighty, speak on behalf of Pastor Yusuf, O oh Lord Almighty, and grant them favor that the Lord, the, the lawmakers, O oh Lord, in Iran, O oh Lord, will hear them, O oh Lord Almighty, and release this pastor. Send your angels, O oh Lord, to fight for him and to deliver him, O oh Lord, from this situation. Even in the name of Jesus Christ, touch the heart of this Iranian government oh lord almighty father god your word says that the heart of kings are in your hands lord if you were able to deal with pharaoh when he enslaved the israelites in egypt lord you are able to deliver pastor yusuf oh lord from this situation in jesus name we pray for deliverance we pray for deliverance we pray for deliverance for him and his children and his wife and his entire family and all the christians who are in prison in iran that father deliverance will be theirs even in jesus name father god comfort them even in the prison cell let them know that you are with them let them know that you are with them let them know that lord you are going to make a way for them to bring them out of the prisons in the name of jesus christ and you are going to set them at liberty even in jesus name father god comfort them strengthen them or lord give them the grace and the boldness to continue to stand for you not to recount their faith not to denounce you not to renounce you in jesus name father grant them the grace grant them the grace let the holy spirit so much fill them that they will keep on standing for our lord jesus standing for our lord jesus even in the name of jesus christ and father we pray that you bless them with your peace you bless them with joy you bless them to let them know that you are even with them for the bible says that when we go through the waters yet you are with us when we go through the fire the fire will not consume us because you are with us the waters will not overwhelm us or sweep us off our feet because you are with us let them have that sense of your presence in them even in the prison even wherever they might they may find themselves let your presence let your glory be with them even in jesus name let the peace of god that surpass all understanding keep their heart and mind through christ jesus let them know that lord you are with them even in the as they go through the valley of the shadow of death, let them know that there, even at that point, you are still with them. And Lord, I pray that in their darkness, you cast light. In their darkness, you cast light. And let your light so shine and bring them out of every prison and every terrible situation that they find themselves. Lord, I pray even for Christians who are being persecuted, who are being burnt, who are being bombed in Nigeria, northern part of Nigeria. I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord God Almighty, arise to God, arise to God, arise to their defense, protect them in Jesus' name and let those attacks cease, let those attacks cease. Father God, fight against their enemies because your word says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Father, take vengeance on their behalf because, Lord, they cannot fight for themselves. They cannot defend themselves. They cannot protect themselves. But you, O oh God, are, are our great protector. You, O oh God, are our great protector. Protect them, O oh Lord, by, Lord, taking vengeance on behalf of them in Jesus' name by silencing their enemies and bringing deliverance unto them. I pray that the war... We, and the, and, and the commotion and confusion going on in the northern part of Nigeria will cease in the name of Jesus. Let there be peace and understanding. I pray for any Christian who is being harassed, who is being tormented, who is being persecuted, even at the point of death, O Lord Almighty, who is being attacked. I pray for divine protection in Jesus' name. I, I immerse them under the blood of Jesus. I release your angels to take a, uh, to form a hedge of defense all around them, even Christians in 
this country and everywhere who are going through persecution, even in their workplace or oh Lord in their mind, wherever they may be going through persecution because of their faith, may you strengthen them, may you deliver them, may you protect them in Jesus' name. Father God Almighty, arise and defend your children because you are our greatest protector, our greatest defense. And Lord, we look up to you to help us. So Lord, I pray that Father God, let us hear a, a greater testimony that Pastor Yusuf has been released and he has been acquitted now. They have cancelled the, the, the sentence of hanging. It has, been, it has been erased even in Jesus' name. We pray for this favor for him. We pray for this favor for him that you touch the Iranian government as stubborn as they are, as hardened as they are. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. There is nothing too hard for you. You are able to speak and every mountain will be moved. Every mountain it will be moved. So I command this mountain which is standing before Pastor Yusuf to be removed even in Jesus' name. To be removed in Jesus' name. May it crumple and fall and may you bring deliverance to him in Jesus' name. There is nothing too hard for you. So Father, step in and bring deliverance. I pray that he will not die. He will not be sentenced to death. He will not be killed. Lord, let him not die. Let us see your salvation at work in his life. Let us see your salvation in the life of Pastor Yusuf. And we use him as a point of contact. That Lord Almighty will deliver him and deliver the other Christians also all over the world. Globally, whoever is going through distress, whoever is going through persecution, Father, protect them, deliver them, and set them free in Jesus' name. Emancipate them. In Jesus' name we pray for thanksgiving. And Father, those who ought, who have to go through it, I pray for the grace. Because your word says that anybody who wants to live a godly life will go through persecution. I pray that those who, it is your will that they go through, may you grant them the grace to go through. And let their lives be a testimony. And be, bring many to Jesus Christ. This I pray in Jesus' name. Let your will, O oh God, be done in this situation. We pray for thanksgiving. Amen. Please. Pray for Pastor Yusuf, pray for other Christians, and God will hear your prayers and bring deliverance. May God bless you. Bye. We are just now getting word that a Christian pastor sentenced to death in Iran is still alive. The 34-year-old was arrested more than two years ago, sentenced to death by hanging for converting from Islam. And then he refused to renounce his Christianity. We are getting these reports from the American Center for Law and Justice. They have been trying to draw attention to this case to save this man's life. J. Allen Seculo, who you know uh, on this program many times, is chief counsel for that group, and you guys have been doing yeoman's work on this, Jay. And as of today, as of today, Matter Connie is alive, but we don't know how much longer that's going to last. That's right. We got word on that this morning. And let me talk about doing a good job. I want to thank Fox News, uh, and you, Megan, and the team at Fox News, so many of the broadcasts have carried their story, and this is the reason this pastor is alive. In fact, uh, last week when we were uh, really aggressively promoting the fact that uh, the execution order, uh, it appeared, had been issued by the Golan Province Court, the Iranian government, after the reports we put forward, and including reports from our own government, State Department, and the President, uh, issued a denial saying we've not sentenced him to death, um, we're, you know, we're charging him with uh, crimes as, as bizarre as being the Zionist spy. But as you know, we have the actual documents from the Iranian court. He was charged, as you said, with apostasy, and that's what his convictions for. He was charged and, and convicted of apostasy because of his Christian faith. They've given him three chances to recant his faith. In fact, last time they said, you don't even have to recant your faith. Just say that uh, Muhammad is the prophet of God. This pastor said, I can't do that. It violates my conscience. And now we're getting global support. Uh, again, the way we're winning this case, I'm calling this media advocacy. We're, gonna ha we're advocating for him in the media. That's what's keeping Iran uh, at least in line temporarily. The last case that's reported that's had this significance, and this was unfortunate, it ended with the actual pastor being hung. This was in the 1990s, early 90s. And the death warrant and the body of the pastor came at the same time. We're trying to avoid that now that we've got not only media but lawyers on the ground. Uh, and we're working it globally, but you all have done a great job of keeping this front and center. We appreciate it. Listen, that's, it hasn't been Fox. It's been you guys. You guys have been behind us. But, but let's, let's get to where we stand now, because we have a situation yep. where our Secretary of State, 89 members of Congress, the European Union, France, Great Britain, Mexico, Germany, they've all condemned Iran for arresting this guy. And they are calling right. for his quick release, but they are saying that this is turning into a political matter, given the sanctions that we're amping up on Iran, and that they may use those sanctions as, as an excuse to end this man's life early and without any negotiation. Jay, 
I want to ask you to, to yeah. give us the big picture on this because our, our viewers may remember it was just last month that we, uh, the American the people, the, our military, saved 19 Iranians uh, from these pirates. And we saw those pictures. Twice we saved done. twice, right. right? So one thirteen, right. one six. Is this the thank you we get? They're gonna they're gonna execute this guy for being a Christian. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's uh, one of their own. They're trying to turn this into. You bring up a very important point, Megan. They're trying to turn this into a political ploy to deal with the Iranian. Uh, issue overall, the sanctions, the uh, pressure with, uh, that's coming now with, between the Israelis and the Iranians. What we have to do is focus this on the fact that this is a human rights case. They can, the political issues aren't going to go away with or without this pastor. But this pastor has been wrongly convicted, and the Iranian regime has signed on to, although they're not abiding by, UN declarations. They've signed them themselves. They are violating those declarations, including, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which has a specific protection for religious liberty, including accepting a new faith. Uh, this pastor, by the way, never was practicing uh, Islam, although they charged him, as you said, with apostasy. But yeah, they're trying to turn this into a political issue. What we have to do is continue not to allow that to happen. And that's why the statements coming out of the uh, president and the secretary of state have been important. We're looking for a joint resolution that can be voted on as early as Wednesday from the House with huge bipartisan support. Uh, Congressman Ellison has joined others. I mean, you got Democrats and Republicans. So this has got wide bipartisan support, bipartisan support. But at the end of the day, you're right. The Iranian regime is trying to turn this into part of the bargaining chips, if you will, with the sanctions. That's just not right. We're not going to let that happen. What is Nader Khani's background? Uh, he grew up in a home that uh, the family was uh, marginally Muslim, if you will. He never embraced Islam, which you do at age, like in Judaism, at age 13, you're born. But within the Islamic tradition, it's more at age 15. He did not. He became a Christian uh, and eventually became a pastor. And that's what they're really aiming How at did here. That not only was he a Christian, you know, there are missionaries that have been there. And there's been a long, Christianity has a long history in Iran, as does Judaism. Pre the Iranian Revolution, there was a vibrant Christian community, there was a vibrant Jewish community. Obviously, that's changed, but there still is a large Christian community there. And frankly, the regime doesn't like that it's growing because it's a radical Islamic regime. Why and they aren't look they at all any sentenced other to death? Religious groups. Why, if, if, they, it's, uh, if it's uh, apostasy, just to be a yeah. Christian there, uh, to, to reject Islam, yeah. then why aren't they all sentenced to death? Uh, here's, the, here's the unfortunate news. We're talking about Pastor Narvar Khani, but there's literally hundreds, thousands of Christians in jail in Iran for practicing their faith. He's the, the face you see right now, but Megan, you hit, hit it right on the head. This is an ongoing problem because they, be, they view Christianity as a political threat to them, which is not at all, but that's how they view it. And that anything that's a threat to them uh, becomes part of a targeted campaign here targeting execution. But there are thousands of Christians in jail in Iran, and you don't hear about them. Unbelievable. You, go, you can go to the ACLJ's website, uh, and they have a daily tweet, tweet for Youssef to call attention to this. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, brethren, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, in this very day, the 19th of February of 2012, has visited me in my house in the vision of the night that we call dream. The Lord came and he picked me up in that vision and he handed me a needle. And uh, in the needle, he told me to pick up the needle and see the eye of the needle, if I could see. So I held the needle between my two fingers, and I was trying to verify and see if I could see the eye of the needle. I couldn't see the eye of the needle. I was trying to do my best, and I looked, I looked. And I looked, and while I was looking, the voice of the Lord spoke to me and said, This is how close the rapture is. There is no time. The nations of this world and the people of this world need to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. So he told me, run very quickly, go to the community TV and announce live that I am coming. So in that very vision, I ran to a community TV. Uh, that looks like a very cheap uh, TV. It is in the community for socializing and it is in a very dense uh, place. So I ran to this TV and I found two journalists and I spoke to them that I wanted to transmit a message live on TV. I paid for it and they set up the studio for me to record. And the journalist told me, before we start recording, we need two witnesses. So I called 
one of my pastors, and I called the sister in Christ. They sat by me, and I started recording. This is what I started recording in the vision. In the vision, I started saying, the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, has come to me announcing the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He had given me a needle between my two fingers, and he has told me to see and very well look if I could see through the eye of a needle. While I was verifying and to see if I could see through the eye of a needle, which was impossible for me to see, he announced to me that he is coming in the cloud to take up the church. And the nations of the world need to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Every nation needs to abandon prostitution, abandon evil, repent from the sin. Young people, adults, everyone, abandon the worries and the cares of the world. Every preoccupation with the material things of this world. Abandon and repent of all your sins and come to the Lord Jesus while it is time. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is coming very, very soon to take up the church into the clouds. And this message of the eye of a needle, it is written in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 24, which very clearly and very specifically say that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. A rich man here symbolizes somebody that is worried with the cares of this world. Somebody that is preoccupied with the things of this world. Somebody that could be going to church but is not ready for the rapture. Somebody that is a preacher but is only worried with the money, with the things of this world. Somebody that sings in a choir but is involved in sexual impurity, in wickedness, and with the fashion of this world. Somebody that could be a, a, an evangelist but is too much dressed into the identity of the world. So the people need to prepare. The Messiah Jesus is coming. Again, I repeat. In the vision of the night that I saw today, the Lord handed to me a needle and he told me to look intently into the eye of the needle, if I could see. So while I was trying to turn the needle, I couldn't see. It was impossible to see the time that is left. And while, when I finished recording, I could see in the transcript of the journalist, the month and the year that was written in the transcript, but the date was scrapped off. I couldn't see the date. And this symbolizes that as we do not know the day or the hour that the Messiah is coming, but we know the season and that month and year which the Lord has told me to hide and not to reveal to anyone, uh, it symbolizes the season. The season for the coming of the Messiah is now. The season for the coming of the Lord to take the bride, it is now. The time is now. Nations and people need to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. When I finished recording, I could see all the nations before me. They were worried. Some were buying clothes. Some were buying food. Some were in the barbershop cutting their hair and uh, shaving their beard. I saw young girls with tight trousers and some were looking at me while I was recording live on TV. But they were not even giving importance to the message of the coming of the Messiah. So the nations are too much worried with the things of this world. The nations are preoccupied with the things of this world, but they are not preoccupied with the coming of the Messiah. So this is my first YouTube recording, and the Lord spoke to me very clearly that this is the cheapest TV so that everybody can verify. When the journalist finished recording, he put the recording so that I can watch myself uh, on the message that will aired live on TV. So I started watching myself, and when we finished, you know, the Lord told me to record this video. Brethren, the Lord is coming. Get ready for the coming of the Messiah, and let us 
meet in heaven.